Hey guys, this is Bad Peak. Today I want to show you the problem two in the recent USA team selection test. So let's go through the problem together. We denote z over nz, the set of integers considered modulo n. So this set has n elements. We can represent it by 0, 1 until n minus 1. Moreover, it has this additive structure. So by adding 1 to n minus 1, we get 0, because everything is modulo n. And the question is to find all positive integers n for which there exists a bijective function g from z over nz to itself, such that the following 101 functions are all bijective. And these functions are g, gx plus x, until gx plus 100x. So here I just try a simple example when n equals to 3. I pick a random bijective function g that matches 0, 1, 2 to 1, 2, 0, which is represented in this first column. And I try to figure out what gx plus x and gx plus 2x looks like. So in this simple case, as you can see, gx plus 2x is already not bijective. So if we try a little bit harder, we can test all the bijective function when n equals to 3. And indeed, none of it satisfies this condition. However, we don't want to test all the possibilities when n gets larger. So let's see how we handle it. So let me start giving the answer of the problem. Indeed, such bijection exists if n has no prime factors smaller or equal than 101. So n has no prime factors smaller or equal than 101. If this is the case, we can simply take gx equals to x. And we re remark that if k and n is uh, relatively prime, then the function x given k of x is bijective from z over nz to itself. Indeed, the difficult part of this problem is to prove that is if n has a prime factor p, then necessarily among the p functions gx, gx plus x until gx plus p minus 1x, at least one of them is not bijective. So the way I'm thinking this problem is through the following table. So each row is represented by an element in this set z over nz, say 0, 1, 2, until n minus 1. And each column is represented by the functions we are interested in g, g plus x, until g plus p minus 1x. To fill this table, we simply apply the function on the corresponding element on the set. So what we know is that each function is a bijection, so each column represents a permutation among these n elements. And that's what we can say on the columns. And now the idea is that if we can develop some useful information on the rows, say if I fix the element 1 and I try to find out some relationship between these uh, p uh, values evaluated on different uh, functions, then we can find out some global information on this table. And that's what we are going to do. So now we fix an element a in the set z over nz and a uh, number p smaller than 101. We want to figure out some uh, relationship between these p numbers ga, ga plus 1 times a until ga plus p minus 1 times a. So since a is fixed, the thing that's varying is the coefficient in front of a. So this leads us to define the following polynomial. So if we define q of x as uh, ga, which is a number, plus
plus x times a to the power p minus 1. Then q0, q1, q until q p minus 1 are defined by these numbers. Since this is a p minus 1 degree polynomial below that the p order, like finite difference of this polynomial is a constant. So the p order finite difference of uh, q is a constant which is equals to p minus 1 factorial times the coefficient in front of x to the power p minus 1 in this case times a to the power p minus 1. In particular, if we write down the formula for the finite difference, this gives us the following identity. So on the left hand side, we have a linear combination of the polynomial q evaluate on different points, so these qi terms. And on the right hand side is a constant p minus 1 factorial times a to the power p minus 1. So the interesting thing is to remark that this coefficient in front of qi is independent of the element a. So qi is nothing but ga plus ia to the power p minus 1. So it depends on the element a. But this coefficient does not depend on a. So now if we go back to our table and put an appropriate coefficient in front of each uh, element raising up to the power p minus 1, then by the previous identity we get the, when we sum up this row, we get p minus 1 factorial times 1 to the power p minus 1. So here a equals to 1. Now we can do the same thing on each of the rows here. And the previous identity provides us a simple way to sum up one row. And then we can just sum up this last column to get the sum of the whole table. Next, we are going to perform the sum in the other way by first summing up the columns. So to sum up along the columns, we remark that these coefficients in this first column are the same. So the sum is nothing but this coefficient times the sum over all these p minus 1 powers. On the other hand, g is a bijection from z over nz to itself. So the sum of all these p minus 1 powers is nothing but the sum over all the elements from 0 to n minus 1 to the power p minus 1. Then we can sum up uh, the second column until the pth column in the same way. So now we get two ways to perform the sum of the table. So in the first way, we first sum up along the rows, and then we can sum up these uh, red numbers in the last column. So the sum over the elements in all the tables is equals to the sum of these red numbers, which is p minus 1 factorial times x to the power p minus 1 for x from 0 to n minus 1. And the second way is to sum up first along the columns and then summing up these uh, blue numbers here. And this gives us the following sum. We see that the sum of x equals to 0 to n minus 1 x to the power p minus 1 is the cofactor of these uh, numbers, I can take it out and then just sum up the coefficients here which are i equals to 0 to p minus 1 of minus 1 to the power p minus 1 minus i times p minus 1 choose i. And a simple calculus shows that this is nothing but 1 minus 1 to the power of p minus 1, which means this is 0. As a result, the sum over here must be equals to 0 as well. But wait a minute, as you may notice, all the terms in this sum are positive. How can it be 0? Indeed, 
we need to emphasize that the addition we perform here is under the operation modulo n. So what we have proved is indeed that this sum equals to 0 modulo n. So now it makes more sense, this uh, equation. And what we are going to prove is that indeed, if p is a prime number that divides n, then this uh, relationship cannot be held. So far, we haven't required any property on the number p. What we have proved is indeed for any number p smaller than 101, this relation holds. Now let's look at the case that p is a prime number. And we are going to prove the following lemma. So that the lemma is the following. p is a prime number. And let's consider the case that n is a uh, a power of p, so let's say n equals to p to the power alpha. And the claim is that the sum over x from 0 to n minus 1, x to the power of p minus 1, in this case, is modulo to p minus 1 times p to the power alpha minus 1 modulo p to the alpha, which is modulo n. So let's assume that this lemma is true and see how we conclude. Indeed, it will take a prime number p, which is smaller than 101. And if we assume that n is divided by p, then we can factorize n as a power of p, let's say p to the power of beta times a number n, where p does not divide n. So this Relation star uh, implies that p to the power of beta divides the sum of x from 0 to n minus 1, x to the power of p minus 1. And indeed, this sum is modulus to n times the sum from x from 0 to p to the beta minus 1, x to the power of p minus 1, modulo p to the beta. And by the lemma, this term is not divided by p to the power beta, and moreover, p does not divide n, so this gives a contradiction. And this means that for any prime number smaller than 101, this prime number does not divide n, and that's what we need. So now let's focus on our lemma. We remark that when p equals to 2, x to the power p minus 1 is nothing but x. In this case, we can evaluate this term and the lemma can be proved easily. Now let's assume that p is larger or equal than 3. In particular, p is an odd uh, prime number. And we are going to follow an induction on this power alpha to prove the statement. Indeed, when alpha equals to 1, the statement holds by simply applying famous little lemma. So this is OK. And let's assume that it is true for an alpha and consider the case alpha plus 1. So we want to evaluate the sum from 0 to p to the power alpha plus 1 minus 1 of x to the power p minus 1. So now I'm going to decompose this p to the power alpha plus 1 elements in the following way. So I will write 0, 1 until p to the alpha minus 1. Because I want to use my induction property, I cut it until p to the power alpha minus 1. And then I go to the next line and write it p to the alpha, p to the alpha plus 1 until 2 times p to the alpha minus 1, and so on. I can write p rows of such uh, in such way until p minus 1 times p to the alpha, p minus 1 times p to the alpha plus 1, until p to the alpha plus 1 minus 1. 
So now I'm going to perform a sum along the columns here and let's see what happens. So for example, let's take this uh, first column. Now this column consists of elements of the type k times p to the power alpha plus 1 and k varies from 0 to p minus 1. Now we take the p to the t minus 1 power of these elements and we can develop it in the following way. So it can be developed as 1 to the power p minus 1 plus p minus 1 times k times p to the power alpha times 1 to the power p minus 2 and all the following terms has power p to the alpha at least squared and this is divided by p to the alpha plus 1 so all this stuff is modulo 0 mod p to the alpha plus 1 so this gives us a simple way to compute the sum and indeed this implies that the sum is nothing but p times 1 to the power p minus 1 plus p minus 1 p to the alpha and sum over k over from 0 to p minus 1 k and this is p times p minus 1 over 2 so we get another p here and this term is also divided by p to the alpha plus 1. So what it remains is nothing but p times 1 to the power p minus 1. And this is true for each of the columns. So now if we sum up all the columns, we have that the sum from 0 to p to the power alpha plus 1 minus 1, x to the power p minus 1, is modulus... Uh, we want to modulate p to the power alpha plus 1 and it's nothing but p times the sum from 0 to p to the alpha minus 1 x to the p minus 1 so basically we uh, reduce the power alpha plus 1 to alpha then we can apply the induction hypothesis and this gives us the result I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, don't forget to uh, subscribe my channel. I will continue uploading interesting mathematics Olympiad problems. Thank you. Bye bye.